Sunday. So if you don't have something in, with which to participate, feel free to go ahead and grab a you know, glass of water or a cup of tea and possibly you know, a cracker, a biscuit, a piece of bread, something that you can use to help participate in our communal experience. And the only other reminder that I have for you today is that we do have a plant sale May 22nd. So you can be in touch, I believe, with, I'm thinking who's helping with this, Kit, Linda Hastings, a couple people are um, helping collect plants. Uh, you can put them under the outside stairs. We have pots, or you might have to bring, pot, you know, like little plastic pots with you. And we would love help, I'm sure, on the day of the sale as well, or for you just to show up and find something to put in your garden or in your home. Uh, it's, it's always a joyful celebration of spring when we have the plant sale. We were particularly grateful to, to be able to gather last year because it was the first outing any of us had had since COVID began. So now it has the symbolism of renewal of community as well as everything else. Those are my announcements for the life of the church. Is there a uh, Meg's got one? Um, the deacons will be having their monthly meeting this Tuesday at seven o'clock via Zoom. Great. Okay. Thank you for that reminder as well. Uh, I'm also just, if, if you're in Zoom, um, the church's internet ha is compromised right now. It has been for the last few weeks. We have a crew coming in to try to fix it this afternoon. They couldn't get in here this morning. So if free um, I hope you'll be able to hear me, even if you can. So we're going to pray that this goes well. So far, can you guys see and hear me? I already lost them. <laughs> we have an unstable connection. No, we can hear you. Okay, good. Well, we're going to yep. offer you music. We're going to go ahead and center ourselves and arrive in this time of worship together. that beautiful music. We're going to share now the call to worship, which adapted from Psalm 109. Let these holy words help lead you into the heart of, of what we consider today the gathering. You'll find them either in bulletin or on the screen. Oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know me when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You have me in. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me back. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts, and lead me in the way everlasting. The tradition church is to share our prayers loud. We have a, a microphone today so that ideally the people in the sanctuary could actually share their words out loud. So we're going to ask first if there are any prayers of concern from the sanctuary. Is there anybody that has something they want to lift up? Sue's going to offer us a prayer. Unless we got any of the wait till she says go ahead. Prayers of concern for Terry O'Brien, who is in the hospital. Thank and you. will be getting better soon. Thank you. All right, prayers for Terry. I'm going to add also um, a, a few other people that have been in and out of the hospital this week. Oh. Bill Botsford. Yeah. Our, our dear friend, Kevin. And prayers that have been lifted up for others in the community. Michelle, John, Phaedra, Nancy, Huntley, Scamp, Richard, Barry, and Jan. And Sue has already mentioned Terry. We won't go into the specifics of why people are where they are, but simply please hold them in your prayer. Prayers for their bodies, their minds, their hearts, and that healing and comfort and dignity may be available to them. Other prayers from the sanctuary. Irene has one. Thank you. Prayer for Judy Schumann. She now in so she is doing better. That's great. So for Judy Schumann, a longtime member of our church and our choir as well. In Zoom, are there prayers of concern that you want to raise up? I see Kevin's hand is raised. That's yeah. not a surprise that all is able to share with us. So Kevin, go ahead. Okay, Reverend Gail, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, prayer for Reverend Gale, Pastor Nathan, Jennifer, and the staff at Brattleboro and the patients at Brattleboro. And also um, prayer for the first responders in the military and prayer for me for protection. Thank you, Kevin, for that prayer. Um, other prayers of concern? Yes, I have that one. Are lit up in Zoom. If you do have one, please go ahead and unmute yourself and share. Um, I have I one. Uh, prayers for my uh, friend Pat there in New Hampshire, um, who is dealing with um, melanoma and has just found out that she is going to have to have treatment aside from uh, the surgery that she had. So just uh, prayers for healing for her. So prayers for Pat, for her healing and her journey through cancer. Other prayers of concern out in our gathering through Zoom? I can't see everybody's pictures, so just again, if you do want to make that prayer, you will need to unmute. Then we're going to turn to what helps balance us out. And we're going to talk more about that later today, but we're going to balance out those things that we're worried about with the things that we are grateful for, the things that we celebrate that renew us and give us joy in the season. I have a few that were raised up at by the eight o'clock that will help us get started. Lori Kinsey gave thanks for amphibians. She had a great 
evening of salamanders and I think frogs on Wednesday night. So she was appreciating amphibians. Others were appreciating cherry blossoms and spring blossoms. And we've had mother cub bear sightings and Ken, who's with us in the sanctuary, has seen a very large bear up on Moody, off of Moody Farm Road. So we've got some bear activity as well. So in the sanctuary, are there any things human, natural that you're grateful for? Lori's going to give us a moment. I just want to say um, the music gives me incredible joy. It makes me feel peaceful. Alan unites it and he makes us all feel beyond belief. I thank him from my soul. Thank you, Lori. Any other um, any things that people want to uplift if, if in I can the just sanctuary? Say one quick thing yeah, before. go ahead. Um, yeah. I just want to share my my boss was on is on maternity leave. She just celebrated the birth of her first child. So new life into the world. So I just want to share. Life. That. Nice. Sasha's going to say something. I just wanted to say that I'm extremely grateful that my sister, that whom you all have met, has finally become a grandmother. Oh, so that's two new a, announcements of life in the world. A little girl. A little girl. That's lovely. And then I think there's another, you, you can maybe pass it over the, and Joyce has something happy to share with us. This is wildlife sighting. Um, yesterday morning and evening, I had in my bird feeder a very large bird. I don't know how we have approached here. And I couldn't identify it um, exactly, but I think it's a brown thrasher. I tried to contact Larry Kinsey because I thought she could fill me in. But um, anyway, a brown thrasher is a very large bird that I've never seen before. And they're usually in the woods. Why he came to, he must be very hungry. <laughs> but he, I think that's what it was. It came twice. It was very heroic, I have to say. So, so not only did she see a very large and unusual bird, you could probably add it to your list of birds that you've seen, right? Brown thrasher. So if you collect birds, at, then that's pretty cool. We've had a mama bear with three babies. Oh, three we, babies. We have a papa bear. And then we had a, a two-year-old or a three-year-old bear. So oh my had a goodness! A lot of bears this year. Yeah. You're sort of like the the bear central then, apparently, yeah. Irene. <laughs> she must be growing some good stuff up where she is. How about the wild turkeys? We had. Several, oh yes. Yeah. They call them herds or gaggles, but they're they're all there and they're big. Big big wild turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're thankful for them until we hit them. Let's not hit them. So now we move to Zoom and we add to the, the laughter and the celebration that's already happening among us. So I see Kevin has his hand raised. Kevin, if you do want to say anything, then just unmute. Yes, can you hear me, Reverend Gail? Go ahead. Go ahead. For Brattleboro retreat i'm grateful for the sunshine i'm grateful for good people and i'm grateful for miracles and my and my friend jeff wants to say what he's grateful for too oh, please everybody that's there that wants to add please do sure i'm grateful for the bradbury tree also and the people here uh helping me and i'm grateful for the lord for giving me family again and friends in a in the fellowship in the community um yeah that's all I got. It's beautiful. Thank you, Jeff. And I see that Deanna unmuted, so it looks like Deanna may have something she wants to say. I'm grateful my dad's getting out of the hospital right now. Oh, right now. Okay. Well, then God be with him and may the angels watch over him and be within him. We're going to say the body prayer shortly, and we will pray for the parts of the body of Christ. Other prayers of gratitude or celebration in Zoom that I haven't noticed? I have one. Go ahead, Meg. Um, I am very grateful that after 14 months, I was finally yesterday able to visit my father in the nursing home, in his room. Um, it's been a very long time, so things are opening up, and I'm extremely grateful for that. That's beautiful. Another sign of renewal that um, some of the things that separate us are being lifted so that we can be with family again, with friends again, with 
our loved ones again. Any other prayers of celebration or gratitude? I, I don't want to miss anything that anybody's happy about. Anybody here? Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, my grandson from uh, New York is visiting for 10 days. He's 18 and uh, he got his first car and he made it up here <laughs> from New York. And uh, he's building his tiny house. So that's up a, up a couple levels on the property and it's a lot of fun to watch. All right, so your grandson is, is with you now. Yeah. Say his first name again, Arden. Pardon me? What's his name? Say his grand, your grandson's first name. Aiden. 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 Okay, that's right. Aiden. Yeah. So Aiden is in our, is in our locality, spending time. That's lovely. Yep. Please focus on those names and places that have been lifted up. We pray also for India, which is having a huge spike in COVID. Um, related both deaths and incidents of contracting it, and they are more than hard pressed. They're in crisis again because of this pandemic. So while we are starting to celebrate renewal, other places are, find, are experiencing second wave. Let us not forget our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Um, and let us also be grateful for the resources we have and let us pray that resources can be made available where they are most needed throughout the world. We pray always for our partner church, the Tikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe. We pray for the villages in Honduras with whom we have formed enduring connections. We pray for the parts of the world where our own children, our own sisters and brothers, our far-flung family and friends have put down roots or from which they originate we are all across this globe the body of christ and now let us pray together about the body of christ and as we enter into this prayer please pray place your hands on the part of the body that you are praying for for yourself or for someone else we're not going to do the anatomical prayer we're going to do the scriptural prayer that comes from Genesis and 1 Corinthians. Creator, Christ, and Comforter, as we are told in Genesis, all of humankind, each of us was made in your image and likeness. Today, we lift up your children in prayer, in concern and celebration. This morning, we place into your keeping the parts of our body, which are your bodies, that need healing and hope, comfort and dignity, love and renewal. You gave birth to the whole world, so we also ask for your attention and compassionate presence for the vulnerable places in your creation. And as we remember in 1 Corinthians 12, we acknowledge with gratitude that you have shared with us, your children, a variety of gifts poured out by the Holy Spirit. And this same Spirit binds us together so that when one of us cries out, you cry out. And when one of us celebrates, you sing along with us. You remind us that as we gather as your people to understand our lives together by looking at our own human bodies, each body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, yet all are members living in one body. It's the same when we who are so many and so different come together as distinctive parts of Christ's resurrection body, made stronger by our shared diversity, unified by belonging to God's self. All of the parts are arranged to function together. Whether you here gathered with us are the strongest or the most vulnerable part of this body, you have been created as necessary and essential to all of us. And you, each one of you, just as you are, is called beloved. Today, let us learn anew what it means to live as members of your human and your holy body. 
Every part dependent on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. And if one part hurts, every other part is involved both in the hurt and in the healing. You, me, we are Christ's body. This faith community is one part of a larger body with many distinct members bound together and transformed by Christ's love. We need each other. We depend on each other. When we pray over our individual minds and hearts and bodies, we are also praying for each other's bodies, hearts, and minds. And we are praying, praying for the hurting and the healing, the living and the dying and the resurrected body of Christ, which is all of us, you and me, belonging to each other, loving each other in this world and in the next. Amen. Let us raise our voices together so that we can hear each other in prayer. If you are in Zoom, please unmute so that we can hear your voices as well. And let us say the Lord's <coughs> Prayer together. You'll find the words either in your bulletin or on the screen. Our Father, Father who, who, art heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, hallowed name. Be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come thy, will be thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, and our, forgive us our sins as we forgive, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Glory forever. Amen. The deacons help decide what we will study. And for the coming season, especially as we re recover and renew, in the wake of the pandemic and so much social polarization, political polarization, and so many other ways that we have been hurting and separated from one another. They ask that we focus now and for the next few weeks on how Christ and his mission and his life model wellness. And today we will begin with a conversation about mental health. And we turn to a scripture, the passage that we studied line by line leading up to Easter, the Beatitudes. Because when we think about how Christ talks about the human condition, those Beatitudes name almost every experience that you can know or empathize with or come across in your life. An excerpt from Matthew 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Peacemakers, for they will be of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So ends the reading. Please, Please pray. pray with me. O holy God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
I think it's apropos that Kevin is here with us today. Because as we begin to think about wellness, Kevin has been asking us to pray for him. And we can see that he, with great strength and courage and resilience, sought out the care that he needed to get things back in balance and to try to stabilize his own life. For a variety of reasons, many of you have been encountering Kevin in our parking lot because his housing became untenable for him and he was living in his car. It's the way we actually first met, right, Kev? A few years ago, that's how I met Kevin when he was coming to the way station and he was camping out and he was in his car. And now he's in a safe place. It's not a permanent solution. It's a step. Mental health is part of the wellness that we are called to uphold in each other. And mental health can be anything from stability, the stability that we know to a spectrum that includes anxiety or depression or other types of diagnoses that impact quality of life. When we're experiencing good equilibrium, we can probably have amazing resilience and function on a day-to-day -day level. And we'll have the experience of emotions of joy and sorrow, but they won't be disproportionate. But sometimes mental health becomes mental illness, becomes an illness that you can't see. When I was a medical chaplain, I would meet with many people who had all kinds of illnesses that you could see because you could look at the outside of their body when someone was being treated for cancer or suffering from diabetes and the loss of parts of their body. So many different illnesses you can see visibly. But those that reside in our neurochemistry aren't obvious. And for so long, they have been accompanied by shame and stigma. And although our culture has worked to educate us about what it means to live with a difference in our cognition or a difference in our mental health, now that there are organizations like NAMI, now that there are nights like Light Up the Dark that focus our attention on things like suicidality and depression, now that people who have experienced it come out and talk to us about it openly, we understand that this part of the human experience is very common among all of us. Depression is the leading cause of disability in both the United States and worldwide. The things that cause depression make it hard to function in an everyday world to hold down a job, to get out of bed, to do self-care, to maintain a relationship. And there are so many other ways that people can experience a difference in their mental health. Christ didn't avoid these situations. Christ walked towards them. Christ sat down with people who were different, who had something unusual to say, and we talked about that when we thought about the Beatitudes and all the different human conditions that are outlined there. And we wondered even then, how do you call the things that are listed in the Beatitudes a blessing? How can you say that somebody who is grieving or hungry or poor or separated from others or unable to take care of themselves, how can you call that a blessing? And how can you call anything having to do with mental health that separates us one from another a blessing? Healing comes from connection. And too often, mental health as well as physical health and other conditions that we didn't choose, we didn't want, separate us. They might separate us through the forms of addiction or other experiences from our own healthy selves. They might separate us from the relationships that are redemptive and loving in our lives. They may separate us from God. 
Sometimes you can't even believe that God is around you. God seems to have abandoned us, right? Uh, over and over again, the Psalms cry out, where are you? Did you make this happen? Because this doesn't make sense. One of my colleagues last night who spoke with me, Judith, is both a psychologist and a Torah scholar. She has fallen in love with the Torah and has been studying it, but she also, this Jewish scholar, loves Jesus and his model for how to live compassionately and how to live with balance and wholeness of human being as well as holy being. And so last night we talked about what it was like to live with mental health as a condition that is either disrupting your own life or shining a light on the human experience because others in your community or in your own family are struggling with it. And she said that sometimes our greatest teachers are those that place in front of us our own powerlessness. Praying to God is not going to fix depression. It will help. Spiritual practices complement and add to the resilience of the people who uh, take them up. Belief in something bigger than yourself and a sense of some type of connection can give you the stamina that you might need to get through the darkest of nights the hardest of days, and yet religion by itself will not fix things like depression, suicidality, and other conditions. It's part of the answer. But when we accompany those that we love and care about into the places where they suffer and struggle, it's humbling because when somebody asks, what do I do now? What's my next step? Why is this happening? We don't have a profound answer and we can't fix it. To sit with somebody in pain, whether it's psychic pain or existential pain or spiritual pain or emotional pain or bodily pain is humbling, especially when you know that all you can do is bear witness and be present. And it's even more humbling when you're overwhelmed, either by your own condition or the condition, the health condition that those you care about live with, and it's too much. And I say this about my own family. Many of you know that my father was a minister and that he died at the age of 47 and that I actually went to divinity school at that very same age and where his ministry ended, mine began. I wear his black robe when I wear a clergy robe. It's like I took up the mantle, right? But it's a different thing. My father wouldn't be allowed to be a minister now. He was bipolar and he was untreated and he was very compassionate and made a huge difference in many people's lives. And he hurt his family very deeply. Each of his children has a different story about what it was like to grow up in a relationship with him. He was both loving and destructive. And we didn't have the language or the words or the understanding to begin to narrate our own journey until much later. And we're all still finding ways to make meaning out of it and to love him in spite of the illness that hurt us too. But it doesn't stop there. Mental health runs in families and it goes from generation to generation. That same condition is prevalent in other members of my family. And our children and our grandchildren may also struggle with forms of mental health. And sometimes we were able to be present to each other, and sometimes we had to get away. We had to take a break and take care of ourselves in order that we could maintain that relationship and come back to that perspective of loving someone who could be so hurtful 
not because they were healthy and they meant it, but because they were very unhealthy and they couldn't help it. But it didn't matter because the damage is the same, regardless of whether it's intended or it's caused by an illness. And so Judah said that one of the most humbling things about having somebody become your teacher who is struggling with something that can't necessarily ever be healed or taken away is to know that we're powerless sometimes. We can't fix it. We can bear witness, and sometimes we can't even do that. Sometimes we have to close our eyes, take a breath and a step, and let it go for a little bit. And what she said is that what we need to remember is that when we feel alone or when we feel like we're not enough, we're not supposed to be. Maybe Jesus was all perfect and could connect us to divinity and could do everything, but we're not God. We're not Jesus. We can't be that person. And so when we look at the model of self-care and care and compassion for others, compassion includes ourselves and what we need to do to take care of ourselves so that we can bear witness and be present to others. And it also involves acknowledging what's right in front of you, what's right with you. Name the suffering that you see. Accept that it exists. Denying it isn't going to help. Pretending that it'll be okay because somebody didn't mean it isn't going to change it. Acknowledge and begin by acknowledging the reality in which you live. Only then can every other step happen. And know that even there in that place, God is with you. You may feel alone, but you are not alone. That is the promise. That is what gives us resilience. What gives us hope and renewal is that we are never alone. God has lived through every kind of brokenness that we can imagine. We don't have to be God. We simply need to love each other and see the divinity in each other. To pray, to reach out, to do what we can, but also honor our own limitations. To take a breath and a step. To acknowledge reality and begin there. And be compassionate first to ourselves and then to others. Perhaps the conditions that are named are not a blessing in and of themselves, but they become our teachers. And if it's not happening to you, it's happening to someone else. And we are all the body of Christ. So what is happening in the mind of one person is happening to all of us. And we may, as a different member of the body of Christ, not be able to fix the other member, but we can know that we belong to each other. And that being different or distinctive doesn't separate you from the body of Christ. It makes you special and important and essential to the rest of us. And we're going to mess it when we love you and ourselves. We're going to get it wrong, but we're going to try again and again and again. And today, when we have communion and we sit down at the table together, there is nobody who is not welcome at this table. All people, all souls are welcome at this table. is what heals us and renews us. And thankful we're not in charge. Holy love does that work for us. Today, we challenge you to imagine that blessing if Christ were standing in front of you, if his hands like the hands of your own self 
touching your body or the hands or your family held your hands through the body prayer if his hands were here and he offered to place them on your forehead or on your heart or simply in your palm what blessing would you ask of the one healer who can heal all of us one way or another he may not cure you he may not give you a miracle but he will connect you to love and it is a love that is here in this world and it is a love that will be with you through all time and beyond death itself what blessing will you ask of the hands of Christ in your own life he begins his encounters with people by blessing them and he ends his encounters with people by blessing them you deserve a blessing just like everybody else that he has ever loved and if you've never asked for one then today's the day ask for a blessing you are a beloved child of God and God will not be parted from you. Thanks be to God. I reminded you earlier, put your thumb up if you all can still hear me. I see a couple thumbs, good, great. Today is communion. But before we turn to that common table, we ask you again to help with your commitment to this church, which is part of a network of churches that do the work of God when we're at our best. And so if you have not already made your contribution, your pledge, your offering today, we ask that you will set aside time to do that. You can go on to jxncc.org and make a donation, or you can send it in an envelope. The people in the sanctuary all faithfully walked right up front and popped it right into the basket that Joan Flubniak made for us so many uh, years ago. It's sitting in the front, and they all saw it, and they all dropped something in, so we thank them. And now we turn to communion. If you need a reminder that we belong to each other, then remember again how Christ, in the time after his crucifixion and after he had risen from the tomb, showed up again and again to his followers by sharing a meal with them. The first was the road to Emmaus. Then he asked for fish in the locked room. And he cooked a fish for the tired, weary fishermen when he called them in off the lake, off the sea. First, he broke his body. But love didn't end when he died. Love flowed out. And the body got bigger. It became more. Christ became more. But our prayer is not a euphemism. Our prayer is real. Love touches every one of us. Love flows out from all of us. And if we allow it, love can be received by each of us. This love is holy, and this love is what binds us and makes us the body of Christ that was broken. So when we break bread, let us know that we are breaking the symbol of love. And so we call down upon our elements, and if you'll place your hands over whatever you're using this morning for communion, we pray, O oh, holy God, we have prayed the prayer of your children. 
who are born anew because of your love. We ask you to be present with us in every meal that we break bread with someone else and simply in knowing your love. Be with us here today in this sacrament, in this gathering, in this broken open body of Christ that spreads itself across many states and time zones. It's physically present in the church and it's in homes all over the country and sometimes all over the world. Be with all of us. And now, brothers and sisters, if you have something that signifies as bread, we remind you to take the bread, place it in your mouth, and today, when you take this broken bread, this bread that is shared with all of you, do so in remembrance of the one who was broken first for all of us and comes back to us whole and more. Take and eat. sort of jumped the gun, but we're going to go, go with the flow anyway. Brothers and sisters, Christ also poured out a cup. Today, as you sip from the cup of love, do so in remembrance of the one whose love binds all of us together in belonging. <laughs> totally messed up my husband who was ready for us to hold some corda and sank this and then I jumped right into the communion but we're going to pray the statement of thanksgiving together Chris I apologize for jumping us around if you can put up the thanksgiving that would be awesome and please everybody unmute so that we can share this together we are not alone. God made us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We have each other. Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble, Can trouble pain, 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 or persecution? No. In all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us has been proven. Neither, neither death, death, neither death, death or life, or life. Yeah. neither it's messenger, messenger heaven, or heaven, nor ruler on earth, nor ruler on earth. Neither, what happens neither what happens today, what happens today nor what may happen tomorrow. tomorrow. Neither, power, neither power, power from on high, 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 nor power from below, nor anything, nor anything else, else power, to separate, power to separate us from the love of God. God. Thanks, be Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Friends, I want to share with you a reading that my colleague Judy offered up to us. It is God's response to our outcry about where God is. It's used in the liturgy of the Jewish faith, and I think today it speaks to all of us. This was God's outcry to the pe this was God's answer to the people's outcry. What is his name? Tell the children of Israel, said God to Moses, that my name is Aheye. Where was I all these years? With you. I am being. I am existence. I am reality. I am in the groan of a beaten slave, 
in the wail of a bereaved mother, in the spilled blood of a murdered child, certain things must be, no matter how painful and incomprehensible to your human selves, in order that the great things, infinitely great and blissful things, should be. But I do not orchestrate these things from some distant heaven, holy and removed from your existential pain. I am there with you, suffering with you, praying for redemption together with you. If you cannot see me, it is not for my ethereality. It is because I am so real. God is closer than we can imagine. So close we can't even see God's self. God is with us. The good news for the people out in Zoom is that you can sing to your heart's content. And the tough news for the people in the sanctuary is you can hum. We're going to revisit the song, There's a Bomb in Gilead, because this is a season when we are focused on wellness and healing. So Alan will play that for us now. everything goes right, we're going to get music for our benediction. We had, we, last week was so full of technical difficulties. It isn't even, I, I mean, it was funny. It was just crazy. Um, so we were humming the benediction last week here in the church, I believe. So Chris, if you're ready, we would love to hear it. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
Alan's going to play us out, so you can hang out in Zoom if you want, or you can uh, be on your way and have a peaceful, wonderful, healing day. Thank you.